good game, man. Taking a look at New York. Greg, they're feeling good, playing like a champion, and don't want to let this get down to a game seven. And I like that mentality. Sure, you like your fans to be there when you win the title, but what's more important is getting the job done. You can have a parade later if you close the deal. So a look at our starters for the Knicks. Collins is out there with Tatum. Then it's Drew. Then it's MP. And it's Booker in at the point guard position. Not quite enough defense. That time around, just lucky he was off. Nailed from three-point land. And we have to mention, Greg, the utter dominance MP has shown recently. Right? A, a huge scoring night for him on insane efficiency. The numbers, you can't even believe what you're reading. You just don't see stat lines like the one that MP had very often. Kevin, it looked like he had a cheat code on the way. He was making everything from the floor. Good. A nice assist from Booker. MP's got six points. I love that bucket from MP in response to their three. Holmgren the screen. And Gilgis Alexander throws it down. And credit the screen for giving him the space he needed to get to the rim. For sure, G.A. allows him to come in with the sledgehammer. Boy, that's a play you just practice time and time again, and that's the result of the work put in. Good way to start this game. You want to get him rolling as early as possible. He's a guy who, if he gets hot, he can carry your offense for long stretches. Now, here's Gilgis Alexander. Pass to Walsh. For Booker, misses off the left iron. Boy, a clean, close look. What a missed opportunity. And that one's good. MP. Uh, he's found his rhythm from deep, and, and you can see the confidence. And I think the defender knows once he gets cooking, look out. The bucket looks awfully big to him right now. Here's Tatum. A three from MP. And again, New York with the triple. Yeah, this looks like a pregame shoot around with all the threes they're allowing. Booker against Gilgis Alexander. Now the pass to Walsh. Back to Gilgis Alexander. And now the Knicks on the break. Here's MP. And they call the foul. So he's got the and one chance here to make it a three-point play. The ball moving on this run has been it is a big part of why they've been able to get these good looks. Irving's checked in for the Thunder. And so New York calls timeout. of the best shooters during the postseason. MV is number one. There is nothing coaches like more than somebody you can count on. MP is trusted by his coaches, his teammates. They count on him to bring it every night. Now, here is Irving. 
Outside for Gilgis Alexander. They need this. Knicks with the rebound. They're coming off a great victory on Wednesday. And in that one, the offensive execution made the difference. They found and exploited the mismatch repeatedly. Well, it was certainly a game that their analytics people had to love breaking down. I thought they exposed every weakness in the defense. And here is Irving, following the three-pointer by MP. Irving against MP. Five to shoot. Irving dishes to Holmgren. He gets it in there. I tell you what, it's, it's almost like stealing to watch how he plays the game from this scene. The Knicks leading by 14. And here's MP for three. Good. A nice assist from Booker. Booker's got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. And here in the first quarter with a little over three and a half minutes played. Gilgis Alexander passes tonight. On the wing, Gilgis Alexander, defended by Booker. You're not going to see that very often. Plenty of space, but he just, let's face it, he whiffs on that. MP, good. Building up a big early lead, they have taken charge of this game. And they've been doing it largely at the offensive end. If the defense does not adjust, this could be a blowout. Well, known for being a terrific passer, he shows you right there, case in point. Shoots the three. Good. He's now got 10 of 10 from the field. 12 straight points off of three-pointers, and the D looks Chelsea. And stolen by MP. One-on-one -on -one here. From deep. Good. Another from three. Buries his 10th triple of the game. Unbelievable. There's 38 seconds left in the first quarter. Up top, Gilgis Alexander, defended by Booker. Boy, Shea Gilgis Alexander has become the master at drawing fouls. And here's MP for three. Knocks down the three ball. MP's got 36. The defense is far too slow to close out on those three-point attempts. Setting the floor for the Knicks. We've got Tatum. Bones Island is out there with MP. Then it's Collins, and it's Myers in into small forward. Now here's Irving. He has yet to score. Just five to shoot. And here's Poole for three. And Tatum pulls it down. Tatum's got his fourth rebound in this one. Getting the latest now from our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. David, it's all yours. Take it away. Hey, guys. MP in the last time out against Oklahoma City was all business. He scored an incredible number of points, and to everybody's surprise, he was dialed in from deep. He made a number of threes. Those were ridiculous numbers he put up. See what he has in store for an encore. Can't wait to see. Kevin? Yeah, David and stretches. He was absolutely dominant. Greg, he'd love to match that performance tonight. This team needs his contributions. When he's right, he makes winning plays time and time again. Well, when you're coming off a game like he had, you know the difference tonight. They're going to load up against him. They're going to try to take him out of his rhythm early. And here is Holmgren, following the three-pointer by MP. Oh, Irving way outside to come right back with the three of his own but it's no good and here's mp for three good and it's tatum picking up the assist mp's got 42 in the game and here's miller he'll bring it up for the oklahoma city thunder kicks to irving for the three buries the long-range jumper and they're hitting the long-range shots that they were missing in the first quarter but still have ground to make up a three from mp it's rebounded by Poole. The Thunder have gone three of eight from the field since the beginning of the second quarter. Miller dishes to Irving. Puts it up. That shot, no good. Knicks have gone six of ten from the floor here in the second quarter. And here's MP for three. Drills it from outside. MP's got 12 points now in the quarter. 
defensively. They just look out of sync, not closing out on the threes in time. Here's Irving. Blanketed by the D, he fights to the rim for the layup. How good is that? I mean, he can make a defender look foolish at times. And here's MP for three. And another three for New York. Out of their last five makes, how about all five from long range? Miller kicks to Irving. It's rebounded by New York. Tatum's got six rebounds in the game. Not really his best quarter as far as scoring. Let's see if he can eventually get back on track. Oklahoma City's gone two of four from three-point range so far in the second quarter. They grab their own miss, and the basket is good. And the D getting out work there on the putback. Can't let that happen. You have got to put a body on somebody. We talk about it ad nauseum, but you've got to be disciplined with the box outs. And another one falls. That gives him 51. Making it look easy. Oklahoma City shooting 38% in the second quarter. Offensively, they look a little bit confused. Now, Holmgren. He's got five. Over Tatum. No good there off the double clutch. MP has been leading the charge for the New York Knicks. A sensational night for him continues as he cranks his three-point made total even higher on what has been a historic night for him. Right back after this break. You could just look at the rebounding differential. These guys are giving everything that they have. They are taking no possession. And looking at where the Knicks that is more than enough of us. Let and we're back with you as these two teams do battle in their quest for an NBA championship. You look at MP in this one, he's been everywhere. Man, he's been running wild on them through that first half. Absolute dynamite on offense. Boy, he has been shouldering the load. Aggressive, skilled, talented, and thus far, unstoppable. We've got Gilgis Alexander. He's out there with Miller. And it's Walsh in at the three. That's Billy Donovan's five as we get going here in the second half. Now, here is Miller. No scoring in this one. And the way they have controlled the glass this game, really impressive. And bottom line, more boards means more possessions. That's how you build a lead. Well, this guy has been efficient and effective all night. That IQ has been on display. Thunder shooting has been a little ragged, just 38% from the field. Booker against Gilgis Alexander. And here's Miller outside. And it's Devin Booker with the rebound. Booker's got four rebounds in this game. And here's MP for three. And a great assist by Booker as that one goes in. Booker's got assist number 10 tonight with that last one. Some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, right now you just need a bucket to get some momentum. Here's Holmgren. From out on the wing, he knocks it down. Holmgren's got his third basket of the night right there. This guy is so confident with his shooting. Zero hesitation from Chet right there. Tatum finds MP. And another one. He's been absolutely ridiculous in this game. You get the sense he just can't miss. Miller surveying the floor. Gilgis Alexander against Booker. Rejected by Booker. Ooh, and this is turning into a slow start here in the second half. Seems like they left that offense in the locker room. MP's shot is good. Well, you love his effort level, right? Particularly when it's winning time. He is going for the finish. And here is Gilgis Alexander. Following the three-pointer by MP. Misses from close range. And a big lead for them on both the scoreboard and the backboard thus far. Good on the three-point shot. I'll tell you, it's one thing to do this at home, another to do it in a hostile environment. Boy, just sheer dominance, the ability to step into enemy territory and flat out take over. This is impressive. Now, here's Gilgis Alexander. 
Offensive struggles continue, missing again. I'll tell you, you hate to pin this on one person, but his inefficiencies at the offensive end are holding this group back. This guy has been unstoppable. It has not mattered at all what the defense throws at him. He's had an answer. Gilgis Alexander against Booker. Let's it go from deep. Jay Gilgis Alexander, and that's good. Gilgis Alexander's got seven points. Really off on his shooting, just 20% this period. Looks like he's getting a bit frustrated. Uh, assists like that have typified their effort today. Terrific ball movement. Now, here's Gilgis Alexander. He's got seven. Going inside. Nine for three. It's rebounded by New York. Tatum's got his seventh rebound here tonight. The three from MP. And good! There's another. And this game has his name written all over it. Greg, he's been phenomenal in offensive onslaught. Knight sets the pick for Miller. Pass to Knight. Here's Gilgis Alexander. Offline with his three. Boy, a tough go for him in this quarter. You can see how desperately he wants to get things started. He just can't make a shot. Yeah, there's six points on consecutive three balls. They're finding holes now in the D. And here is Gilgis Alexander following the three-pointer by MP. And it's Jason Tatum with the foul. That is his first foul of the game. And Oklahoma City making a change. Irving's checked in. Now, here's Holmgren. And again, no good by Oklahoma City. And here's MP for three. And it's Shea Gilgis Alexander with the rebound. 32 seconds left to play here in the third. Pass to Holmgren. The kick out to Irving. Four on the clock. To stop the run. Booker pulls it in. Booker's got his seventh rebound here tonight. A three from MP. Good on the triple. Their ability, again, to stretch the floor, particularly in this second half. And guys, boy, when you're hitting, it sure does work. It obviously opens up major options at the offensive end. And so it's the New York Knicks able to put up. Now let's take a look at our assist of the game presented by State Farm. It's just true artistry. He's checked in for Markel Fultz. Now a timeout called by Oklahoma City. Once again, fans, let's make some noise for your Thunder Girls dance team. A few possessions into the fourth quarter, just over a minute played. Irving up top. Got a piece of it. And New York looking at who they've got. Bones Highland is out there with MP. And it's Patterson in at the center, filling out the middle. Here's Irving. The Thunder with another miss. New York's gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. Beyond the arc. They get it back. Patterson. And the shot goes in. And buckets like that have been hard to come by. Not the most exciting game. Both sides look way off in terms of their shooting. Well, you have to appreciate the defensive battle for sure. Both squads struggling on the offensive end. We call this grit and grind. Huge hole in the defense that possession. He didn't waste any time cutting through it. Pass to Morgan. MP outside. Misses the three. The Thunder have gone just one of six in the field to start the fourth quarter. A bit of a slowdown for them right now. Out left to the wing. Here's Holmgren. It's good from about 19 feet. Oh, Chet Holmgren gets to that midi game. What a silky smooth jumper. And so it's Highland with it. He brings it up for New York. A nice shot by MP. 
Coming off a big game, his confidence couldn't be higher, and Coach knows it. Well, the best players, to me, deliver night after night after night. So as long as he's hot, keep riding it. Miller, no up. And the way he was able to reach out towards that release had an impact. Well, no question. He altered that shot, and most of the time, that's just as good as blocking it. He's just stretching them out. The defense has got to do a better job of staying attached to him. Well, you know this. This is a guy who's looking for his shot the whole time. You have to know who you're guarding. KYP, know your personnel. Over to the wing. Screen by MP. A three ball. It's rebounded by Oklahoma City. Hawker's got four rebounds in this game. Holmgren in the post. Patterson on him. Miller outside. Miller with another miss. He needs to drive to the rim. The shot just not going. And wow, that's the end of an epic journey taken by both these teams in unbelievable fashion. Get the NBA title rings ready, folks, for the Knicks. And this was one that never really was in doubt, I thought, an all-around dominant performance. And you kind of thought that maybe even going into the game. Yeah, there was a sense of that in men. They, they just pretty much blew them right out of the water. A clinic was put on display here today. They got the job done in a big way here in Game 6. And I think they're starting to carve their names into the Larry O'Brien Trophy. Yeah, they should. I mean, they've got this title wrapped up. So impressive what they were able to do here tonight. The last thing they wanted was to have this series go all the way to seven games. They had the opportunity to clinch the championship right here, right now, and they did not let it slip away. And you know, looking back at all the contributions tonight, it was a really phenomenal all-around game for MP. They simply can't stop him right now. This guy playing with passion and focus. And here are the Knicks. From the arc. And again, New York with the triple. And once they smelled blood in the water, you could see the killer instinct take over. And you want to save your best for last. Tonight, they've done that and then some. Miller outside. And they've done it. The New York Knicks have won the NBA championship. Thanks for coming out to support your team. Make sure you get oh, to be crowned a champion on the road is something else. To win and to do it with a crowd that was so emotional and so into this game, you've beaten the team and you've conquered everything that this great arena holds. Yeah, it's a bittersweet moment for the home crowd. But our full credit to the victors and the amazing job they did to never lose focus or drive. And boy, this is the moment they've been working towards all season long. And even though they don't get to celebrate in front of their home fans, does not take away from the satisfaction. Let's take you to the presentation of the Larry O'Brien Trophy. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver doing the honor.
go. He did it, but there's no question. There's no question now. That's seven. That's seven. Come on. That's seven. seven. Let's go. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes. The champ is here, baby. <laughs> hey, Mr. Hey, Mr. Thank you, thank you, MP. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. So, seven championships, one more than Michael Jordan, the man many would consider the greatest basketball player of all time. What does that mean to you? <laughs> uh, man, that's a good question. Uh, this is something me and my dad of uh, what talked about <laughs> since I was a little kid. And as I've said before, you already know, uh, seven has always been the goal. And now that I'm actually here, <laughs> man, it's hard to believe. Uh, all right, who's next? So am I hearing you right that you are saying you are the greatest of all time? Mm. Uh, listen, you know, I know everybody's going to have a different opinion on that, and everybody has a different definition of what great means to them. But as far as I'm concerned, yes, ma'am, I am the greatest to ever do it. ¿Qué les dices a los que dicen que no eres el mejor de todo el tiempo? Gracias. Appreciate you. What do you say to those who say you're not the greatest of all time? You know, that doesn't bother me. You know, I'm not one to check socials and all that. And I get why someone would say it's MJ or LeBron or someone on that level. But I know deep down that I've got the most talent, uh, the best work ethic, and uh, the best competitive spirit of anyone to ever play this game. And listen, those guys would probably say the same thing about themselves if you ask them. You know, it's that kind of confidence uh, is what it takes to be an all-time great, and that's what I am. I am an all-time great. We here. Be clear, my boy is the GOAT. That's greatest <laughs> of all time. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, sir. Gary, what you got? This is actually for Prince, so and he's got seven championships. How many more do you think he can get? How many more does he want? <laughs> not eight, not nine, not 10, not 11. Listen, keep listen. Going. We're going to talk about it tonight, and we'll let y'all know next time. All right, appreciate y'all. Good night, good night. 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 Good MP is a better basketball player than Michael Jeffrey Jordan. In order to understand what that means, you have to understand who his heirness was, and he was, quite simply, the greatest competitor I have ever seen in the history of pro sports. There is a reason nobody has more championships than Jordan in the modern era, and that's because he's the greatest to ever do it. He's the greatest scorer, the greatest one-on-one -on -one defender, and the most dominant talent the game has ever seen. That is, until MP. Until MP came along and won seven titles of his own, no one could come close to challenging Michael Jordan, all due respect to Kobe and LeBron. Not only did he win, but he did it with a mesmerizing combination of natural talent and hard-earned skill. His ability to hang in the air longer than his opponents is legendary, but so is his willingness to adapt his game as he aged and to somehow keep improving even as his athleticism declined. MJ won finals MVP in all six of his championship teams. He led the league in scoring 10 times. Now, you may not agree with my take about his defense, but I dare you to name a better scorer. Upon his retirement, he had the highest per game scoring averages in history in both the regular and post seasons, and has so many famous clutch shots that I don't even have time to name them all before we go to commercial break. I realize now, as I describe MJ to you, that I, I keep speaking as if he's still the GOAT. And that's because his greatness is so deeply ingrained in my psyche that I find it almost impossible to let go. But the fact of the matter is, MP is better. I never thought this day would come, but it has. And I can't deny the truth, which is this. 
For as great as MJ was, MP is better. And if you don't agree with that, well, I kindly invite you to make your own list. But this one is mine, and MP is, without a doubt, the clear-cut number one GOAT of all time. Every basketball fan around the world knows the legend of MP. Son of Prince, grandson of Truck, fearless competitor, tireless worker, winner. And while the seeds of all of this were planted long before I met him, the MP that I met was, in many ways, still a child. Now, <laughs> I don't mean that as an insult. When he first walked into my office, he was only 19 years old. How many of you were fully formed adults at 19, huh? Shaq, I'm looking at you specifically, buddy. <laughs> now, what do I mean when I say he was a child? Well, for one thing, he had a child's enthusiasm for the game. MP hung on my every word when we first met. Listened to everything I said like it was the most important thing he had ever heard. I mean, he really did listen. You know, he'd go out and execute something you talked about in a film session like he'd been working on it his entire life. But he was a child in other ways, too. For one thing, he was obsessed with Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I'm serious. He had the figurines and everything. He said they'd be worth a lot of money one day, but I'm pretty sure he played with them when no one was watching. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that MP was himself, first and foremost, from day one in the league until the day he retired. And while he did a lot of growing up over the years, that boyish enthusiasm for the game never left him. It's what made him great. He never lost that passion for learning and growing and getting better. And I'm pretty sure he still has those Ninja Turtle figurines laying around somewhere. <laughs> now, you can't talk about MP without talking about his accomplishments on the court. So let me talk about some of the most impressive. He is the league's all-time leader in three-point shots made. <laughs> nobody ever shot it from downtown like my guy MP, and nobody ever will. He holds the record for most points scored in a single season. That's right. He scored more points in a single year than Wilt. More than MJ, more than LeBron, more than whoever your favorite's favorite is. MP was that dude. He holds the record for three-pointers made in a single season. Now, records are made to be broken, but it's gonna be a long time before we see someone that locked in for that long a period of time. He broke the most unbreakable record in sports, topping Wilt's famous 100-point game. I mean, come on! Will anyone who witnessed that masterpiece ever forget where they were when they saw it? I know I won't. I mean, I happen to have the best seats in the house, but still. 
Look, I could go on and on about the greatness of MP, but I know he likes to do that too. So rather than step on all of his toes, allow me to introduce the man you are all here to see, the legend, the GOAT, MP. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And thank you, Coach Warren, for that beautiful introduction. Uh, some people might be wondering why you took a few shots at me in my extremely valuable collectibles, but anyone who knows you knows you're a master motivator. And anyone who knows me knows I rise to the occasion when I've been disrespected. <laughs> so once again, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for, un for helping me unlock the best version of me. Like Coach Warren just mentioned, people know my story by now. They know about my grandpa, the late, great truck. They know about my father, Prince, and how he joined the league as a cocky kid, but left a champion. But what they might not know is that throughout my career, me and my dad would have these sprawling conversations late into the night, where we talk about the history of the game and my family's place in that history. One of my favorite memories from those conversations was the time my dad told me the story of my grandpa's first NBA game. My grandpa didn't have the advantages I had growing up. He was raised in the inner city by a blue-collar father and a stay-at-home mom. There were times when they struggled to put food on the table, but he never complained. He never asked, why me? He just put his head down and got to work. He could have taken the easy way out and did things he wasn't supposed to to make a quick buck. But my grandpa, he wasn't built like that. He had love in his heart, and he wanted to make his parents proud. Now, don't get me wrong. If you mess with him or someone he loved, hey, well, trust me, you didn't want to do that. <laughs> when it came time to fight for what was right, he never backed down. And that's the kind of ball player he was. He didn't have the most skill, but he had the most heart. He fought for a spot in the NBA like his life depended on it. Through sheer force of will, he got drafted by the Celtics in the third round. He was sent to a minor league team to start his career, but he stayed ready. And it's a good thing that he did, because he only had 24 hours from the time he was called up to the time he had to guard Magic Johnson. And what did he do? He shut him down when everyone expected him to fall on his face. Nah, my grandpa, he rose to the occasion. I'll never forget the pride I saw on my father's face when he told me that story. He knew that if it wasn't for my grandpa's fierceness, loyalty, and unwavering belief in himself, neither of us would be where we are today. I love you, grandpa. Thanks for everything. One of my favorite moments from those conversations was when my dad told me about the game that my grandpa outdueled Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Everyone remembers Truck as a defensive force, a great locker room guy, a valuable veteran mentor who showed young guys the ropes. But what most people don't remember is that the man could hoop. Now that wasn't his strength, but when he felt like the team needed it, he wasn't afraid to get into his bag. If you don't believe me, Watch the game. For those who need a refresher, the Pistons lost their first three matchups with the Bulls that year, and Coach Daly was sick of it. So during the fourth game, when MJ went out for 11 of the Bulls' first 12 points, my grandpa got the call to come in and knock MJ around a little, bad boy style. <laughs> but grandpa had other plans. He knew that what the team needed that day was for someone to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with his airness. And by the time the dust settled, defensive Star Wars truck had outdueled the great Michael Jordan. The thing that I love about that story is that it shows a side of my grandpa most people didn't get to see. He sacrificed for his family 
and he was a really serious guy, but he loved life, and he loved the game of basketball. And every once in a while, that fun-loving guy would come out of his shell and show the world that you, can, you can't pigeonhole someone, no matter how well you think you know them. One of my favorite memories from those conversations was the time that my dad told me about his first game against the late, great Kobe Bryant. People might remember that my dad was on fire that game, and you might expect him to be proud of that. But it turned out to be the worst thing for him because it gave him too much confidence. You need to believe in yourself to make it in this league, for sure. But the flip side to that is you have to stay hungry. And sometimes when you get early success, it can go to your head. That's what happened to my dad. He took his foot off the gas and was left behind, for a little while anyway. The great thing about this story is it ends in triumph. Rather than whine and suck his way out of the league, he got his head screwed on straight, got to work, and ended his career a champion. Growth isn't linear. When you think things can only go up, they go down. And when you think things can only go down, <laughs> hey, they go up. My dad learned that the hard way but he learned it. And that perseverance is something I'll always respect about him. One of my favorite memories from those conversations is when my dad told me about shutting down the great LeBron James in the NBA Finals. I love you, LeBron, don't get me wrong, but this is my moment, so I gotta tell this story. <laughs> That's not always easy for someone like him. My dad could hoop. He had everything in his head. But the proudest moment of his career was game four of the finals, when he used every last ounce of energy he had to shut down the greatest player on the planet. And again, I'm sorry, LeBron, but he held King James to under 10 points. Do you understand how wild that is in that moment? Lots of people still think he's some brash kid with no respect for the game. But those who knew him and love him like I do understand that he's a human being, one who learned from his mistakes and came out on the other side a better ball player and a better human being. My family paved the way for me, and I had every advantage growing up. But once I got to the NBA, they couldn't play the games for me. And as a lot of you remember, my first game was the most hyped debut since LeBron James. All eyes were on me, and everyone expected me to be spectacular. So what did I do? I killed it, obviously. I'm sure you guys remember. <laughs> 20 million people watched that game. There's a reason I'm standing here right now, and it's not because I'm a great public speaker. It's because I delivered, time and time again. One of the most important things you can do if you want to have success is to set goals. And me, being who I am, I set some pretty lofty ones for my rookie season. I wanted to be the first player in NBA history to win Rookie of the Year, MVP, a championship, and Finals MVP. And I did it. People said I was crazy, but I knew I had the talent and the drive to do what had never been done before. It might sound cocky, but what's cocky when you can back it up? To me, that's just being honest. When people talk about my career, one of the first things they mention is how many championships I've won. And when I meet people for the first time, one of the most common questions I get is, what's it like to have more championships than Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Most people think I'll talk about the glory, the money, the fame. But when I think about those championships, I think about the people I share those moments with. Winning means nothing if you have no one to share it with. So I'd like to thank every teammate, every coach, every friend, every family member, and every mentor who was there for me during my playing days. Without you all beside me, the winning wouldn't mean a thing. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I do want to touch on this GOAT discussion. 
that's been making the rounds after a couple of high-profile pundits have named me the best to ever do it. On the one hand, it's flattering. When you work as hard as I do at something like this, of course, a part of you wants to be the greatest. But what a lot of people in my situation won't admit is that so much of what I've accomplished comes down to luck. Yes, I made the most of my situation. But if I'm five foot nothing, basketball is completely off the table for me. I got lucky with my genes, lucky with my family, and lucky to be born where I was, when I was. So if you consider me the GOAT, well, I appreciate that. I'm proud of that. But to all the people in the world who can't do what I do, who aren't rich or famous, I want you to know that you're loved for who you are by the people who matter most. And that's way, way more important than anything you can do on the basketball court. I love you all. I appreciate you all. And I thank you. Thank you for your time.